In this example, we're going to put together what we've learned about the first and second derivative and what they tell us about the graph of a function to help us actually sketch the graph of a function. So we want to sketch a possible graph of a function f that satisfies the following criteria. This isn't going to be the only possible function that satisfies these criteria, but they're all going to probably look roughly similar to the one that we produce here. So the conditions that our graph has to meet is that the first derivative has to be less than zero or negative on the interval from negative infinity to zero. Uh, the first derivative has to be positive on the uh, interval from zero to infinity. The second derivative is negative on these two intervals. The second derivative is positive on this interval. And then we have some limit conditions and a point we have to go through as well. And so before we start actually graphing anything, let's go ahead and interpret what all these conditions uh, are telling us about the graph of our function f. So remember the first derivative is telling us of where our function is increasing and decreasing. So when our first derivative is negative, our function is decreasing. Where our first derivative is positive, that's where our function is increasing. And so what I sometimes like to do is at the bottom of our graph kind of break these intervals apart, break it into the intervals where we are increasing and concave up or concave down, and the intervals where we are decreasing and concave up or concave down. Let's start putting that information up there, starting with that information about increasing and decreasing coming from our first derivative. So on this interval to the left of zero, from negative infinity to zero, our first derivative is negative, so that is where our function is going to be decreasing. On the other half of our number line, to the right of x equals zero, that is where our first derivative is positive, and that means our function is going to be increasing. So we're not, still not ready to graph any part of our function. Next, I want to add a separate little interval down here related to the second derivative and concavity. Remember, the second derivative tells us about the concavity of our function, where our second derivative is negative. That's where our graph is going to bend down and be concave down. And when our second derivative is positive, that is when our graph is going to bend upwards and be concave up. So on the interval from negative infinity to negative 2, so it's the left until we get to about this point right here, and then also on the interval from 2 to positive infinity. So this interval to the right over here, our graph is going to be concave down. And what happens on that little middle piece for our second derivative? Well, that's what the rest of our condition tells us. On this little min middle interval from negative 2 to positive 2, we can see our second derivative is greater than 0 or positive. So that's where we are going to be concave up. And already we can see a few things about the graph of our function from these two uh, statements. Here our function is switching from decreasing to increasing. So at x equals 0 where that change occurs, we're going to have a little local minimum. At these two locations of negative 2 and positive 2, we can see our concavity is changing. So that's where we're going to have some inflection points. All right, so we have a few more conditions we have to include on our graph as well. But these conditions aren't going to be included in these little lower intervals. We can actually just start graphing these conditions right away. So remember, whenever we're looking at limits involving x approaching negative infinity or positive infinity for our function, we have that interpretation of that is describing the end behavior as we move to the left or to the right on the graph of our function. And so if uh, as we head off to the left or as x approaches negative infinity, our function f approaches positive 2, that has that interpretation that we have a horizontal asymptote as we head off to the left. Our horizontal asymptote is at y equals 2. If we look at the right end behavior of our function or the limit as x approaches positive infinity, here our function f of x, that was a small little typo, uh, f of x is going to be equal to 4. So that means we're going to have a horizontal asymptote, but this time off to the right. Okay, that third little condition says that uh, the value of our function at 0 is equal to negative 3. So that means we're going to have to go through this point. We're going to have to have this little y-intercept at negative 3. And furthermore, we know that x equals 0 is where our first derivative changes signs, where our function changes from decreasing to increasing. 
And so that's going to correspond to a little local minimum. We know our local minimum is going to be at negative 3. Right? The last couple things we know is that, well, we have a couple inflection points here. Right? x equals negative 2 and positive 2. We're going to have some kind of inflection points. They're on the left or right of our minimum, and they're pretty close by, so they're going to have to be above our local minimum. And so now what we have to do is go from the left end of our graph to this first point using this information we have about our function and its behavior. On this farthest left interval, it's the left of negative 2, we can see our function is going to be decreasing and concave down. So as we head away from this horizontal asymptote at y equals 2, our function has to be decreasing and concave down. So it has to be going down while bending down until we get to that point at x equals negative 2. So next we have to focus in on this little interval between our next two points of interest when x is negative 2 and x is 0. On this little interval from negative 2 to 0, we can see our function is still decreasing, but now we're concave up. So we have to be going down while our graph bends upwards. So that's going to look something like this. Right, and there we can see our inflection point showing up. The change in concavity can be seen. Here we're concave down, and now we are concave up until we hit our local minimum. In our next little interval connecting these two pieces of our graph together, we can see, well, our first derivative is positive on this interval, so our function is going to be increasing. We are still concave up until we get to x equals 2. So now we are increasing and concave up. So our graph is going to look something like this. All right, so now we just have one little interval to go. To the right of x equals 2, we can see our function is always increasing, so we're going to be going up for the rest of our graph, at least going up slowly approaching that horizontal asymptote at y equals 4. And we also see that we have to be concave down as we are increasing. So our graph has to go up with a downward bend as it goes up. And that downward bend is helping us approach that horizontal asymptote. And so in pink, we have the final sketch of our graph, a sketch of y equals f of x. It has all these conditions met. The first derivative is negative on this interval, positive on this interval. Our second derivatives are matching up with these intervals, and we are respecting these limits and the point the function has to go through as well. Other examples might have us going in and doing some algebra to find these pieces on our own before we start graphing. Right, we can solve some equations or inequalities to find out where our first and second derivatives are positive and negative. We can look at these limits as x approaches positive or negative infinity to find the end behavior. Once we've collected all that information, it just turns into a problem like this, where we have to just put that information together to sketch our actual function.